No chapter is complete without some statistical tests. So this one is no different. Wait, when we did simple linear regression, we had two major tests that we could do. One was a test for the significance of the overall model, and the other was a t-test to test the significance of an individual coefficient. We still have that in the multiple linear regression case. The, the f stat is, is still calculated the same. It is still a ratio of the mean squared regression divided by the mean squared error. Essentially, the variation that you can't explain relative to the variation that you cannot explain. The bigger that number is, that means the more you're able to explain relative to what you can't explain, and the more likely that your model is to be significant. Okay, so f stat tells quite, quite a nice story. Our hypothesis is a little bit different now. We're going to use our Greek letters. You know, like we did when tests for the mean or tests for the variance. And our Greek letter in uh, regression is beta, right? We're trying to estimate the particular coefficients. And here, uh, HO, which means the model is not significant. And when we say it's not significant, that means all the slopes are zero, every single one. Now, mathematically, uh, we express that as uh, beta 1 equals to beta 2 equals to beta 3 equals to however many different parameters or, or independent variables you have, all, all equal to 0. And HA, it's not that they all need to be different than 0. All we need, all we need is at least one of those particular slopes to not be equal to 0. Don't need all of them to be not equal to 0. We just need one. So kind of like a low standard, right? I mean, you just need to get one of those parameters to not equal to zero. Just one of those coefficients to not equal to zero. Boom, your model is significant. F, the stat itself has a P, which is we remember from earlier, is the number of parameters, number of x variables in the model, and that's for the numerator degrees of freedom, and n minus p minus 1 for the denominator degrees of freedom. Right? n being the sample size, minus the number of parameters, minus 1. It's good to know this and make a note of it. I mean, it is on the output, but you know it doesn't hurt to sort of kind of have it in your mind as well, just in case uh, you're dealing with a piece of output where it's missing. So let's do that for for this particular model, right? It is a stat. It is a it is a test. So it has all the six steps that every single test always has. Okay, so let's test in 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 this regard. Test if the model predicting alumni giving is significant. And let's just assume uh, a level of significance of 1%. Okay. Yeah, I know, handwriting is atrocious. Uh, PowerPoints saved my career. Okay, so we see the keywords here, the model, significant. And those are those are if you want to pull out all the verbiage that's the that's the key those are t two key words that we're looking for that really scream out to us this is an f test there you go that's it. so step one step one what is our h o what is our h a now i look at the uh output and i look at my model and i know that i have three independent variables so i'm trying to predict three slopes so I am going to say that beta 1 is the same as beta 2, which is the same as beta 3, and they're all equal to 0. That is just another way of saying the model is not significant. Okay? Model not significant. Now, what if the model is significant? Well, it means at least 1, and I'm going to go beta i, doesn't equal to zero where I could be first slope, the second slope, 
or the third slope because there's only three of them there. This means the model is significant. Whether you make a note of the words model significant, model not significant, when you don't go to write out your or select your HO and your HA is up to you. Okay? But this part is vital. This is how we represent the HO and HA in the multiple linear regression context. We've got to have some betas in there. Okay? That's, that's mandatory. Step two, we have an alpha 0.01. Right, step three, now we have our F stat. And we look in our F stat, and it's in the same spot as it was for the simple linear regression, right, 34.2. So F equals to 34.2, right? but don't forget those degrees of freedom. The numerator degrees of freedom of the number of parameters, which is three, although it is on the output, and a denominator degrees of freedom of 44 which is the same as n minus p minus 1, which is 48 minus 3 minus 1. Okay. Remember, an f stat is, is, only, is only half an f stat without its degrees of freedom. Step 4, what's my p value? I read that out off the output. Now Excel calls it significance P. And it's 1.43 times 10 to the minus 11. Very, very small number. In fact, so small that we're confident saying that that P is much, much less than alpha. So the actual risk of committing type 1 error, far less than our tolerance for committing a type 1 error. Therefore, we're comfortable rejecting H0 and, and being sure or reasonably sure that uh, H0 ought to be rejected. Okay, so therefore reject H0 with uh, alpha of 0 0.01. And step six, you know, last but not least, we can conclude that model is significant. Okay. And it is it is that it is that straightforward. That's it. I mean we're just reporting stuff, but we're reporting it in a very particular uh, structure, following the six steps of a statistical test, appropriately stating what HO and HA are, and using the correct and appropriate test statistic for this particular situation. Okay, we also know that there is a t-test for an individual variable. And by individual variable, that has to be a variable that's specifically mentioned. Now, it could be any of the three, right? and, and I'll do one of them just to sort of get started, but we'll talk about the other two. So I'm going to look at grad rate, and so conduct an appropriate test to determine whether graduation rate is significantly, or it could just say be related I'll just use the word significantly related to alumni giving. You could also say uh, predicts alumni giving too. Giving, and uh, we'll assume alpha is equal to uh, 0 0.01 as well. So now we're seeing a specific independent variable mentioned, called out by name, right away t-test. Just one. Just one independent variable is mentioned. And how does it relate to the y? 
the dependent variable. One independent variable. How does it relate to the dependent variable? That means t-test. That's screaming out at us t-test. So we have our six steps. H-O, H-A. And I look at the output and I see that graduation rate is the first slope, which means it is beta 1. And we check. See, beta 1 is equal to 0 versus the opposite where beta 1 doesn't equal to 0. If I were testing percentage of classes under 20, that would be beta 2. If I were testing student-faculty ratio, that would be testing for beta 3. Notice the rate. Intercept is beta 0. So we're counting here. Intercept is beta 0. Grad rate, beta 1. Percentage of classes under 20, beta 2. Student-faculty rate, ratio, excuse me, beta 3. Don't make everything all beta 1 because I did beta 1 example. Okay, it depends on where its ranking is. Step two, alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Step three, we go, who? We're testing an individual specifically named coefficient. It is a t-test. And we look for the t-test related to grad rate. And we see that that t-stat is 4.50. No t-stat is complete without its degrees of freedom. And in this case, it is 44. Same as the n minus p minus 1. Same as when we discussed it way back in the simple linear regression case. Nothing's changed, okay? Those fundamentals are still the same. Okay, p-value. We read that right out of the output along the row with graduation rate. And we see that it is 4.8, I'll call it times 10 to the minus 5. Pretty small number. So small, in fact, that that P, again, is less than or equal to alpha. Therefore, we're very comfortable rejecting H naught. And step 6, we can conclude that there is a significant relationship between these two variables. Graduation rate. And alumni giving. Not surprising, right? You could also say the slope is significantly different than zero. But we, we kind of like to keep the language in there as, as common usage as we possibly can, uh, minimizing stat speak. I know significant uh, can be sort of a stat speaky word, but I, I think most people understand what significant means in a non-stats context. So I, I think it's okay. We can kind of cheat a little bit and sneak a statsy word in there without it being too statsy. Okay. So, and, and that essentially completes our six steps, right? Same six steps as we do, did before. We can now, we could talk about the percentage of classes under 20, which would be beta 2. Okay. And we, th we can see also that, look at that p-value. That p-value is pretty high. Pretty high, 0.83. Not likely to reject H naught here, right? So likely this coefficient for percentage of classes under 20, not significantly different than zero. Okay, so being small class sizes, not in this particular case, not uh, significantly related to uh, greater amounts of alumni giving. Not a major factor in whether you like a university or don't like a university. Student-faculty ratio, right, the lower that is, right, that is significant, right? Pretty small p-value there, 0 0.00353 and on, right? So that p, less than any reasonable level of alpha. Uh, so we would reject h naught there, and we would say that, hey, there is a significant relationship between student-faculty ratio and alumni giving. 
So we're able to make uh, determinations across all the variables. In so, well, as we get more used to doing the tests, obviously from a, a teacher point of view, when I examine it, there will be a, a test where you have to do all the steps. But there will come a time where we will just discuss it and say, hey, discuss um, what are the significant factors related to alumni giving. You do not have to conduct a, a statistical test. right? So you couldn't get questions like that. When you discuss anything in a quantitative environment, you mention numbers. Okay, don't just say, hey, uh, graduation rate significant, student faculty ratio is significant, percentage of classes under 20 not significant. Okay, great. What did you base that on? Well, the numbers, right? Well, I based it on uh, graduation rate with a p-value of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 5 and student faculty rate with a p-value of 0 0.035 are, are both very low uh, and in fact, have p-values less than any reasonable level of alpha. Therefore, they are significantly related to alumni giving. On the other hand, percentage of classes under 20 with a very high p-value of 0.835 uh, is not significantly different than zero and would not be considered to be uh, significantly related to alumni giving, okay, or, or something like that. So can use words in this as well without the six steps of statistical test, if that is what I'm asking you for. But if you see the word test, man, test is a, test is a six letter word with six steps in it. <laughs> all right, okay. So we now know all the tests we need to do. We've interpreted coefficients, uh, We've done all, adjusted our squared. We've looked at, uh, you know, goodness of fit. Here are the seven basic questions that one can ask for any regression equation. Okay, uh, for for instance, what is the estimated regression equation? What is the regression equation itself? Right, of course. Describe the goodness of fit. Standard stuff for any linear programming question. Is the model, overall model significant? Conduct an appropriate test, right? We see those two key words, overall model. Right? Ooh, overall model significant. F test, six steps, go for it. Are all the predictors um, significant within the context of the model? Explain, justify your answer. Notice that's just what I just did two seconds ago. But I didn't, I doesn't ask for a test. Right, so it's just a discussion. But anytime you discuss something in a quantitative environment, you have to mention numbers. You have to mention the numbers upon which you base your conclusion. Numbers, 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 numbers. Uh, I, I know sometimes uh, tests now are, are electronically uh, driven, but I, I always consider when I when I have to uh, look, mark paper tests that I, I need to... I need a stamp that just says, include numbers, mention specific numbers, because it's so easy to forget. You've got the conclusion, you've got the numbers in your head, but you've got to write them down. Okay? Now, I may ask you for a test, okay? Don't get me wrong. It could be a test to see if an individual, and, and you see the word test, and, and, and off you go, right? But sometimes you just have to des describe it or talk about it. Does the intercept have practical meaning? And if so, what is it? Which is what we've done. Uh, give the practical meanings to the estimated partial regression coefficients. That just means the slopes. Okay, so it's just fancy stats words for slopes. And the all important, this is the wonderful one, name a variable you would add to the model. Oh, that's great, right? I mean, what's missing? What would you think is missing? Okay, so. There's several other, uh, you know, outputs here. I encourage you to go through the the steps, go through the questions related to each one, and discuss it at least in your own head. Uh, in in another clip, I will do a uh, I will do a model for one of these. Okay, Ooh, mysterious. Which one could it be? Okay, I might do one, two actually. Okay, and just they'll just be quick little. Uh, F tests and T tests, okay, and discussion. Stay tuned.